If anybody should be able to understand evolution, it is me. Because I make molecules for a living. And I don't just buy a kit and mix this and mix this and get that. I mean, ab initio, I make molecules. I understand how hard it is to make molecules. I understand that if I take nature's toolkit, it can be much easier. Because all the tools are already there, and I just mix it in the proportions that... And I do it, do it under these conditions. And it, but ab initio is very, very hard. I don't understand evolution. And I will confess that to you. Is it okay for me to say that I don't understand this? Is that all right? I know that there's a lot of people out there that don't understand anything about ev organic synthesis, but they understand evolution. I understand a lot about making molecules. I don't understand evolution. And you would say that, wow, I must be really unusual. Let me tell you what goes on in the back rooms of science. With National Academy members, with Nobel Prize winners, I have sat with them. And when I get them alone, not in public, because it's, it's a scary thing if you, t if you say what I just said. And I say, do you understand all of this, where all of this came from and how this happens? Every time that I have sat with people they, who are synthetic chemists, who understand this, they go, uh-uh. Nope. These people are just so far off on how they believe this stuff came together. I have sat with National Academy members and Nobel Prize winners. Sometimes I will say, do you understand this? And if they're afraid to say yes, they say nothing. They just stare at me because they can't sincerely do it. I was once brought in by the, the dean of the department once and many years ago, and he was a chemist, and he was kind of concerned about some things. I said, let me, let me ask you something. You're a chemist. Do you understand this? How do you get... How do you get DNA without a cell membrane? And how do you get a cell membrane without a DNA? And, and how does all this come together from this? He said, Jim, we have no idea. We have no idea. I said, isn't it interesting that you, the dean of science, and I, the chemistry professor, can talk about this quietly in your office, but we can't go out there and talk about this? If you understand evolution, I am fine with that. I'm not going to try to change you, not at all. In fact, I wish I had the understanding that you have. But about seven or eight years ago, I posted on my website that I don't understand. And I said, I will buy lunch for anyone that will sit with me and explain to me evolution. And I won't argue with you until I don't understand something. I will ask you to clarify. But you can't wave by and say, this enzyme does that. you got to get down in the details of where molecules are built for me. Nobody has come forth. The Atheist Society contacted me. The Atheist, <laughs> the Atheist Society contacted me. They said that they will buy the lunch. And they challenged the Atheist Society, go down to Houston, have lunch with this guy, and talk to him. Nobody's come. <laughs> now remember, because I'm just going to ask, when I stop understanding what you're talking about, I will ask. So I'm, I sincerely want to know. I would like to believe it, but I just can't. Now, I understand microevolution. I really do. We do this all the time in the lab. I understand this. But when you have speciation changes, when you have organs changing, when you have to have concerted lines of evolution all happening in the same place in time, not just one line, concerted lines all in the same place, all in the same environment, this is very hard to fathom. I was in Israel not too long ago talking with a, a bioengineer. Talking with a bioengineer and and, and, and uh, he was describing to me the, the ear. And he was studying the different changes in the modulus of the ear. And I said, how does this come about? He says, oh, Jim, you know, we all believe in evolution, but we have no idea how it happened. 